Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Man if crochet just burned more calories I'd be using a size zero weight yarn. <laughs> oh my. Just have to wish and hope and crochet on. Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Ribbed Balaclava for Kids. I also just call this a ski mask. I'm not that fancy. So what we have today is a really cool pattern. It is for children of two to four or children of six to ten years of size. So I'm going to be doing the two to four years today. The only difference is the number of chains that we're going to do and uh, we will be pointing out the differences, we meaning me. I'll point out the differences as we go. Using Red Heart Super Saver as a choice of yarn and a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. Now this pattern took me a while to understand how to actually do it. So I've been kind of procrastinating today's tutorial but actually I just kind of figured it out this morning. So let me show you um, in a diagram on what we're actually going to be doing today. So what we have in this particular hat is that this hat is not done in a circle. So it's done from side to side. So let's just say that we start our beginning like this and we just go across the row. What we're then going to do is that we're going to create these rows and they're going to get shorter and shorter and shorter on the one side only. Okay and once they get one uh, completely short like this then the next row will then come along and we'll come back and we'll pick them all back up and then begin shorter and shorter and shorter again. And what this is doing is it's creating the look on the top of that hat just like you see here that's coming to this point. The other thing that's happening in this particular pattern as well is that we are going to be working on just the top portion here first. So we're just going to be working on the top and then we just fasten off and when we don't we just go up until this point right here. Then we just pick up the bottom part right here and we take that and then that's where we meet it and then the rest of the hat is then formed around the edge. So it's only when we get to the space area that the top and the bottom divide from each other and then we just uh, take both of them separately of course and then we join it with another row here and then bring it back up and when we're completely done we just sew this back seam aligned so you don't see the back of this hat. So it's kind of a neat way to go so just gotta look at it as in almost in like a main piece that divides off into the top and then this bottom piece then picks back up and then you'll pick it back up again and finish it off. So hopefully that makes sense and that was part of my trouble with understanding this pattern. So we're now going to begin and we're gonna get ourselves started using Red Heart Super Saver. I am just gonna be using a really bright green today and that's my goal. Before I get too far in this tutorial I did not have the sample when I started this tutorial but I have it now as I'm about to finish the seam. So I'm just taking the back part of the tutorial putting it right here. So this is our goal. So we started off on one side and then we are going to take the top piece and extend it out and then we fasten off and then we extend the bottom piece and then we then with this bottom piece then we grab onto it again and form this. So at the very end what we're going to do is just do the seam line and the very front of it will then have the opening then for this. So this is our goal and this is what we're working towards and let's continue on in the tutorial. So as we look at the pattern here just really quickly before we begin is that when we start the very first one the first row is the right side. RS is short for right side. The second row is wrong side and the reason why I wanted to write this is that we have a repeat that goes on and I wanna make sure that I'm always hitting the proper side of this and we're gonna be marking the right side of the project on the first row just to make sure that we understand exactly what it is. So let's begin and you can either chain 39 or 49. So 39 is a small size. 49 is the six to ten years of size and the instructions are pretty much the same. The only difference is that there's a difference of a stitch count in order to make the hat taller and we're going to begin that journey. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start with our five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook with Red Heart Super Saver. My goal today is to do the entire hat on tutorial format just so you know. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to chain either 39 or 49 depending on the size that you would like to do and then just do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and do the number of chains that you want for your particular size. I'll be back in a moment. 
Let's begin the first row for all sizes. You're going to go second chain from the hook, grab the back hump of the chain, it's just a nicer look and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across your chain and maybe back up on the other side. So for the small size you'll have 38 single crochets and for the larger size you'll have 48 and I'll be back in a moment. I'm coming all the way across to the other side. Just pull up a large loop. Now I want you to grab a stitch marker or a spare piece of yarn and before you turn it I want you to mark this side that you're looking at with a stitch marker. So just going in some fibers or some strands on this side of the work only and just drag the yarn through or a stitch marker and pull through. And just and we will remove this later. So whenever we can see this we can tell that we're on the right side of the project. So if you look at the other side see it's not there. So this will always tell us what is the right side and what is the wrong side. So let's put this back on and let's turn our work and we're gonna begin row number two which is part of the repeat that will be happening as we begin. So we're going to begin the whole section where it's going to start losing stitches as we do this and if you look on page number two you can actually see a, a bit of a diagram for that too, actually a picture and this is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do rows number two and three and it says after we do that it says to repeat the last two rows four more times. So I put the row numbers here so it'll be a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's four more times as it's stating here and I'll check it off as they go and this will make one wedge that you'll see happening and it will appear like this. So you can see that's gonna happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start that and this will be rows number two and three coming up and then you're gonna repeat that four more times as per the pattern. Let's begin row number two. So this is the start of the repeat for this section. So what we're going to do is that you're going to chain one and you're going to work in the back loops only. So what you have to do is that if you're new to crochet there's always two strands that make up a stitch. The first strand that's closest to you is the front loop and the other strand away from you if you dive through the middle is the back loop. So when you start row number two you're going to only slip stitch in the back loop only so it's not even a single crochet and you're gonna slip stitch. So slip. This slip stitch and the next single crochet are going to be skipped when you come back and do this on row, th number, row number three. So the next one is a single crochet on the back loop only. So this tells me that this is the top of the hat. The remaining of the stitches all the way across are going to each be a single crochet in the back loop only. And I want you to go all the way across. This is row number two and I'll pick you up on row number three in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of number two. So this is the neckline. So the other side where we did that fancy stitch work is the top of the hat. So let's begin number three. So as we begin number three this is the neckline so you're just gonna chain up one and then using the back loop only you're going to single crochet yourself all the way back across. However you are going to leave the final single crochet and the final slip stitch empty. You're not gonna go into those two stitches and you're gonna leave those so that you don't gain any so that you can start subtracting out stitches. So please go all the way across and do not do the final two stitches which is the single crochet and the slip stitch and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming to the end of number three. So I wanna ignore the final two stitches when I get up there. So I'm gonna ignore this slip stitch and the first single crochet and so I'm stopping at the third one before the end. So now you're going to repeat then rows number two and three a total of four more times and as I showed you on the sheet you're gonna do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So when you start the next repeat, so starting back on row number two again, you're going to chain up one and you're going to slip stitch in the back loop only and then single crochet into the back loop only of the next one and then that's where you're going to start again. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. So when you get back and you do row number three you're just gonna ignore these final two and stop early. So you'll have a step, stepping down motion just like you see. So I need you now to repeat number two and three a total of four more times which will take you through four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and then that's where I'm gonna pick you up and we'll continue along with our journey. I'll be back in a moment. 
So I've now just done the repeat of repeating rows number two and three a total of four more times. So once that's done we need to turn our work and do repeating of row number two just one more time and then that will help us then begin to do the next section. So the next section our uh, next row here is, is the same as row number two so just chain up one slip stitch in the back loop only and then single crochet in the back loop all the way to the other side and then we're going to begin the next part of this which will be the ending of the repeat itself. So just uh, single crochet in the back loop only to, this, to the other side I'll be back in and a moment. Once you're all the way across you're gonna turn your work. Now in this next row that it states in the instructions is that we are going to go across this and then down the angle here and pick everything back up. Remember the starting counts that we had after we did row number one. So in the small size you had 38 single crochets across and in the large size you had 48. So our goal is to get ourselves back to that number by using this and coming down this angle here and then that will help form the top of the hat right here. So let's begin the next row and let's take it step by step. Let's begin the next row by just chaining up one and do one single crochet all in the back loop all the way to the other side here. So I'm just gonna stop about two stitches early just to pick you up there and I'll be there in a moment and this will be part of the next row. I'll be back in a second. So now I'm coming up all the way to the end. I've stopped two stitches early just to recap here. I want you to ignore this large one here. This is the start and you can see that there's five indentations. We have one, two, three, four and five. So to do this just continue in single crochet in the back loop only right to the end of this one. I could have told you to do that already but I decided not to. And then I want you to start down here. So just jump on down and we'll pull in and you are going to do in the back loop only for the first one and then single crochet the slip stitch. And that was the first time that that happened and you need to do a total of five times. So jumping back down here you were going to do the single crochet in the back loop only and single crochet in the next slip stitch. So that was two. So the back loop only and single crochet here. That was three. Back loop only. Single crochet and then finally the back loop only and single crochet. This should be how it should look. So it comes down on an angle. So the number of stitches that you should have should equal the same number that you started with. So it will either be 38 or 48. So I want you to verify that before you begin and then we're gonna cover this once again. So I do in fact have 38. So no extra stitch work needed in order to fix my work. So that's good. So now what it states in the pattern is that we need to repeat double asterisks to double asterisks once more time, one more time. So this takes us then to back to the beginning here of doing the second and third rows and then repeating that again four times. Then doing the second row after that's done and then you want to complete and do what I just showed you. So I want you to st uh, just scroll back now to the second row once again and you can pick it up if you need to or if you understand it you can do that and just check it off on your list. So you can just turn your work and then begin and we're looking at the wrong side of the work and we can tell because the stitch marker here is on the back and I also marked that on the sheet. So let me just get you started and on your repeat and then I'll leave that in your capable hands. So you're gonna pick up at the repeat and you're gonna just chain up one. This is the second row and you will slip stitch in the back loop only of the first one and then you're going to single crochet in the back loops of all the remaining that are left. So you're just gonna follow that around. It will make the nice turn on its own and you will see how it will come together really quite nicely. So I want you to do the entire repeat once again and I will be back in just a few moments as we begin the next part of this tutorial. So you should finish on the repeat of coming all the way across and then back down on the next section before you start and doing the face part next and that's where I'm gonna pick you up in a moment. So I've just almost completed the second repeat. So I just wanna show you what it looks like before I do the final one that will take me back over to here which will then bring this together. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like and I am going to show sure, remember it's just a single crochet in the back loop only and then you still have your five stepping downs. So you have one, two, three, four and five. So remember that you'll step down with a single crochet in the back loop then single crochet and then step down and etc. and get yourself all the way back and you'll have the same number that we started with down here which in my case will be 38. You could have 48 depending on the size that you're making. So please do that. I'll be right back. So I've now just come all the way across and now we're going to start shaping the face in the upper level of the face. So when we go to look at the particular picture again we're just gonna concentrate on the upper level only uh, for the next uh, section and we're going to be noticing this is where the sizing starts changing on both of the different sizes. So up until now it's been the same instruction pretty much other than just the length of the chain but the width of the face is just gonna be slightly different of course for the different sizes. So let's move on and we're gonna be shaping the face up opening and this is the upper portion next. So don't fasten off and this is where we're gonna pick up on the pattern. So we're gonna turn our work and begin the first row here of shaping the face. So we only want to go down a certain amount of stitches. So we're going to just chain one at this point and we're gonna slip stitch in the back loop only. Okay. And then we're going to then do the following instruction. So for the smallest size that I'm working on it's going to be 18 single crochets in the back loop only and for the a larger child it'll be 23. So just starting and count out. So you just say one and go all the way to either 18 or 23 depending on your size and then that's where you're gonna stop and that will be the eyebrow line pretty much of the eyes. So please do that and I'll be right back in a moment. So here I have 18 done. You could have 23. You're gonna turn your work and now we're going to begin the repeating of this section. So here in the instructions we're going to begin second and third row. It's just like we did before. The difference is it's just not as wide, right? And the other difference is, is this is where the sizing will come into play. So we're going to do our second row. You'll do your single crochet in the back loops all the way to the end leaving the last two stitches empty like we have before and then the third row is slip stitch in the back loops and um, sorry the slip stitch in the back loop of the first one and then one uh, single crochet in the back loop of each of the next. So you're going to repeat rows number two and three a total of either twice for the small size, three times for the large size and this is going to provide a large a larger opening for you for the face. Once that's done then all of the sizes you'll pick up in the next row and you'll be working at the ends of the rows just like you did before. So because you'll have the next row that you will either had a repeat of two or three times there's a difference of four to five times in that stepping down like we talked about before. So let's just start rows number two and three and let's get you through the repeat of doing the upper level of the face opening. So row number two of the face opening you're just gonna chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in the back loops all the way to the other side except for the very final two that you'll leave unworked. So just single crochet yourself in the back loop all the way to the sec uh, third last stitch and that's where I'm gonna pick up next. So this is row number two of the upper level of the face. Once you finish number two leaving the last two empty turn your work and do number three. Number three is what you already know so just chain up one slip stitch in the back loop of the first one and then uh, single crochet in the back loop of all the ones remaining to the other side. So I need you now to repeat rows number two and three a total of two more times if it's a small size, three more times if it is the uh, larger uh, child size and then that's where I'm gonna pick up. So make sure you do this and do your repeats and then I'll be back and we'll pick up in the next row to have a nice uh, conclusion for this section for the repeat. So let's do that and I'll be back in a moment. So I've just now done my repeats and you can see what we have going on here. So what we're going to do then is just you're gonna work your way across the top. Remember that we had a certain amount of stitches so we're gonna have a total of 19 stitches at the end of what we're about to do or 24. It's not the same count as like when we did here and we came down. It's not the same at all. So you gotta make sure that you're just gonna keep your, your stitch counts consistent as you go. So we're going to begin the next row. Remember that if you did the larger size you would have had an extra repeat going on here as well. So all I need you to do is just chain up one and do one single crochet in the back loops only and when you come to the ends of the rows we need to make sure that we are gonna go down the sides of that in order to keep the stitch count consistent. I'll be back in a moment. So to go down the 
first part here we're just gonna uh, do all the way to the end and then just step down you're just gonna slip our single crochet in the back loop only in the next level down and then just do a single crochet in the next slip stitch and then back loop only and keep doing that until you're back to where you had started before so you're gonna create the whole look going down on an angle. Like that. So I want, I want to verify that I have a total of 19 stitches. You may have 24 if it's the larger size. So verify that and then I'll be right back in a moment. So now that I did the shape face opening just one time we're now going to repeat the triple asterisk to the triple asterisk here. So what this means is that we have to go back to the second row and complete all of this again but we need to stop at the triple asterisk. So we need to stop after we repeat the last two rows either two or three times. So what I need you to do is that I need you to start back on row number two and three and then repeat that two or three more times depending on the size that you're working on and then we're gonna pick up from that point. So that's going to be the only thing that we do for the second portion of this shape the opening. I actually filmed this all the way to, to accidentally doing it wrong. So I had a frog back in order to get myself back to this point in order to get there. So let's start again row number two, three and then repeat either two or three times and that's the next part just to create this face. So I now verified the number of stitches that I have. I have 19. There's still one more row before the repeat of this. So you're gonna turn your work and you're at the top of the hat. So you're just gonna chain up one. You'll do your slip stitch in the back loop only first and then you're going to then bring yourself as a single crochet back loop all the way down to the opening of the face right here. So and that's where the end of the repeat will happen and I will pick you up there in a moment. So I'm just finishing up then the repeat of the upper part and what I want to do is that I wanna make sure the last row which is keeping in the count is going to end on the wrong side and that will matter significantly. So make sure that you do that and then just fasten off. So when you're ready to go on the next portion this will already be ready to go so that you can start on the on the right side in the future. So we're now going to pick this up and I want you to uh, review. Well we'll review together actually and we'll do the lower section starting right here. In the lower section we need the wrong side facing us so we're gonna be having the WS wrong side and we're going to begin making the slot face opening. So when you look at the children that are here you'll notice that it's a half moon shape pretty much. So we're gonna have a little bit of an opening and building it out and then once we get to a certain part it's just gonna be back and forth on the rows in order to get to that particular point. So that's what we're going to be doing and once we get there you're going to repeat uh, row number four either eight or twelve more times depending on the size you're working on and then we'll have a conclusion. So here's the thing that caused me to have the retake. So when I was doing this I accidentally misread the instruction. So we're gonna be building this out and when we come across on the joining row to bring this all together it's gonna go across and then jump over here and then we're gonna finish at the top of this. We're gonna bring it all together in one big sweep and so when I filmed it before I had accidentally added a couple more rows to get this to finish off before doing this which is kind of a mistake. So what I need you to do is turn to the wrong side of the work. You can tell by the stitch marker where that is and we're going to beginning after the next stitch that's available to you. So it'll be the very next stitch and that's where we're going to start the bottom section next. So we're going to begin the bottom section right in the next stitch available to you. Make sure you are looking at the wrong side of the work. It matters. And so let's create a slip knot for extra security and go into the back loop of the very next stitch that's available and just join it. Chain one and you're gonna put this one and the next stitch together as one. So just going in, pull through, go right up over top of the straggler to hide it in and then going in to the next one, pull through and pull through two. All in the back loops just so you know. And so now you're just gonna zip all the way to the base of the hat just with a single crochet in the back loop only and I will pick you up at that point in a moment. Okay, once you're at the base of the hat you're gonna turn and do row number two. So row number two what we're going to do is that the last two stitches of this section right here will be two together as one stitch. So just chain up one and just apply one single crochet in the back loop only and then the two last stitches will be single crochet two together in the back loop and I'll see you there in a moment. This is row number two. 
put the last two stitches together as one stitch when you're going all the way and then turn your work and let's do row number three and it's the same as the first row so just chain up one and then the, put the first two together as a single crochet together and then do one single crochet in the back loop all the way to the other side which is the bottom of the hat and please do that and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, let's turn our work and do row number four. So four is gonna be repeated a certain amount of times but we just have to do it once. So it's just chain up one and just do one single crochet in the back loop only all the way across the row and I'll be back in a moment. I'm coming all the way across and come into the last stitch. So now you're just going to turn your work and do row number four either eight more times if it's the smaller size and 12 more times if it is the larger size. So you just have to chain up one and apply one single crochet back loop into each stitch and please do the number of rows that you are doing for your size and then you'll meet me back up here in a moment and when we go to start the next uh, portion of this we gotta make sure that we are starting on the right side. So if you're losing counts at all just make sure that before you start the next row uh, after we've done this repeat it, you are on the right side of the work. And we'll talk about that when we get there in a few moments. So just in the number of repeats that I wanted, I wanted eight times and so I did that. So now we're gonna move on to the next row here of the lower section. We have two more rows to do before we attach it to the top here to bring it to a conclusion. So as we begin the next row, make sure that you are looking for the right side of the work. I can tell by my stitch marker. And so you're just going to uh, chain up one and you will apply one single crochet in the back loop only except for the very last stitch. You will put two single crochet back loops into the last stitch to have the increase happening. So before when we started this section we were doing a decrease and now we're increasing it to bring it to the half moon shape that you need for the face. So please do that and I'll be at the end of the line in a moment. At the end of the line you're just looking for the very last stitch to get you there and it will be two single crochets in the back loop of the last one. And then you'll turn your work and then begin the next row here in the lower section. So the last row here in the lower section is just chain up one and you're going to apply two single crochets into the back loop only of the very first stitch. That allows you to have another increase and then one single crochet in the back loop of each all the way to the bottom of the hat. So please do that and then we're going to start the joining row in a moment. So right now this is where we are and we're now going to do the joining row. So we gotta just take this step by step. So we're gonna be coming across, we'll do one more increase here and then we're just gonna immediately join this so that this will have an opening face and then we're gonna come up across and then across to the top here. So we got lots going on and this is the last major row and then you are going to then repeat the uh, two sections of what you did at the very beginning to conclude this so that you have the seam on the back of the hat. So we're going to start off please and you will just uh, chain one and one single crochet in the back loop uh, up until the second last stitch here and I will see you there in a moment just to pick you up. So just continue along the row and put me on pause now. So I'm coming close to the end and of this section right here. So the last one will have two single crochets in the back loop only. You're then going to just grab the next one here and continuing with the back loop only you're just going to single crochet. Just make sure that things are nice and tight. You can't fix that later if you're not tight the first time and then continue just to go on this row and then I'll meet you at the end of this section here in a moment. So just stand by for a second. Just put me on pause. So I'm approaching the very end so I wanna go right to the end with a single crochet in the back loop only and then I wanna start dropping down like we already know how to do. So you're gonna drop down these divots. So just come on down and just single crochet in the back loop only on the first one and then single crochet in the regular slip stitch. And keep on doing that until you don't see any more of these divots. We're gonna be pulling the top closed at the end of this just so you know. So you keep on coming down and that's how it's gonna be. So what I want you to do is verify your count and make sure that it's the same number that you started with at the very beginning. So there should be 38 
um, single crochets again. If you're missing a stitch just fake one and just put an extra one if you have to. If you have one too many or two too many just uh, do single crochet two together somewhere uh, near the top of here so that you can hide it in but there's always ways to correct things. So you should either have 38 single crochets across the top or 48 and then we're going to pick up and do what we already know what to do here at the beginning of this hat that we started with. So we're now here at the top of this instruction. It says repeat double asterisk to double asterisk as given above twice more. Then fasten off and then we're going to do the back seam line. So if you recall it's back at the very beginning here. It's the second row here and you're going to repeat the instruction as you did it the first time and make sure that you go all the way to the double asterisk here. And then once you do that once you're gonna just go back again and do it again and then you'll end up back here once again. And so you just have to reverse the video back to that moment but it's exactly what you already know and just check it off in your list and when we come back then I'll have the, I'll get ready for the back seam line and that's what our goal is. So please do that now. Repeat those uh, sections twice and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm now at the end of this. I did my two sections. You can see that it looks pretty even and that's what our goal was. So we wanna fasten this yarn long enough so that we can sew the edges together. So don't make it too long but don't be too short either. And we are going to seal the top then as the second step. But we know what the right side of the project is because the fact that we have this. So we're just gonna roll it and keep that out and facing out like this. And then we're going to put this onto a tapestry needle and then just put it together. So let's do that. So this is a two step process. So I want you to put that long strand on a tapestry needle. I then want you just to wrap it so that you capture the edges together and this is called a whip stitch. You're gonna come in one side and back over and just attach it. So if you do it right it'll actually look pretty even. So I'm gonna go into this stitch here and then grab the next stitch on the other side. And so you're just gonna work all the way down the seam line doing the same thing. And so you're putting this together. So if you pull it nice and tight once in a while it'll help really hide that in and just work your way all the way down the seam line to bring it together. And then this is be step number one and then I'll be back in a moment. As you're coming down the edge the number of stitches should be aligned with each other. If something is going wrong it doesn't hurt to be able to skip a certain amount of stitches to bring it back in alignment. So skipping at least just one stitch at a time if you need to do multiple. So I just had to skip one stitch and then I'm back to being aligned again. It's important that you know how to do stuff like that because nothing in life is ever perfect. So this just keeping going down the edge. I am going to show you how to weave in the ends and so any ends that you will have I want you to do the same way and I'll just demonstrate it one time. So once you come to the very last one just join it. Now turn it to the inside of the hat. Now you can tell because this is the outside right because that's the right side of the work. So I want you just to fasten it just right on the edge just enough so that you can form this into a loop to kind of tie onto itself. And when you pull it don't change the shape of the hat. Then staying on the inside of the hat just weaving it into, into some fibers. So don't let that needle peek out the other side. And just pull it through. And when you pull it taut don't change the shape. That's so important for you to know that. So then you'll go back to where you came and then back down one more time. So in and out a total of three times on the fibers on the inside. And once you have that done you can safely cut that down. Now you can remove out your right side stitch marker but we're not done because we have a hole in the top. So we need to secure that into position first and that's what we need to pull that together. So what I like to do is just put my strand on a tapestry needle. The other side I would like to have a slip knot and so when I put it in I wanna just go through and then put it through the slip knot and that will lock onto itself. And I want you to throw this strand to the inside of the hat. We'll deal with that later. Now you just want to evenly go around the stitch work. 
but don't pull it all the way shut until you're all the way around and then it will evenly close. So this is called gathering the top. Once you're all the way around the top then you're gonna pull shut and this will close it in and then I go directly across like that and then what I like to do is directly cross it in the other direction. So go there and then from the other direction I go this way. And that will close that off. Then I'm gonna stick the needle through this and using my hand behind I'm gonna come out through the middle on the interior and I'll just put this inside out. Pull it snug and then on the inside any loose ends that I will have I will secure in with the tapestry needle back and forth a total three times. So I tie it in a knot first just secure it and then just stay within the fibers on the inside of the hat back and forth a total of three times. So this would be how you would make this hat. It's really not that complicated just several steps. It's not like a hat that you go round and round and round. It's more um, intricate than that and any loose ends you'll wanna do that with which I have to go back and fix. So anyway that's what it looks like and it's really neat and I think it's a great idea and it will keep a child warm and this is the toddler size version of your ski mask or your balaclava. <laughs> I have a hard time saying that. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.